Blog Talk Radio. Well, praise the Lord. This is live with David Hester. I am your host. Uh, today we have a, a special guest with us, um, and his name is Eric Hoven with Creation Science Evangelism. Uh, I'm sure you know of his website. Uh, I talk about him uh, frequently at uh, www. Dot Dr. Dino dot com and um, he's he's all over the place uh, defending the faith against evolution and uh, he is a young earth creation science advocate and I'm glad to have him on my program uh, brother Eric are you there I am Dave thanks so much for this opportunity really appreciate uh opportunity to get out and share the truth. That's what we love to do. you got the best job in the yeah. world, man. Get to go out all over the place and spread the truth of the gospel through the creation message. You can't beat it. Amen. You're right. You're right. Uh, uh, not not too long ago, um, I, I uh, came across your father um, probably actually about eight years ago. Uh, it just seems like yesterday. And uh, <laughs> I... I didn't really, I, I believed God was the creator, okay? I had, I had no doubt about that, but I didn't really think it mattered how he went about doing the creation. And I never knew that there were so many things attacking the, uh, the, the biblical message of creation. And I was, I was attending a church that... Uh, you know, it, it was kind of like, you know, a gap theory teaching or something, and, mm. you know, kind, kind of mixing science with, you know, the, the Bible and, uh, you, you know, uh, the, the, the science of the day or whatever. And yeah, exactly. Got, Nothing wrong with yeah. mixing science with the Bible. We agree with science. We love science. It's when we start right. mixing the religion of evolution uh, in with the Bible. Uh, that's where you run into real problems. You're exactly right. It's amazing, 90% right. of churches in America today will not stand firm on a literal six-day creation, just like the Bible talks about. And that's, uh, that really worries me. Uh, amen. Amen. So, you know, there's, there's so many uh, denominations out there. You've got some of them that say that each, each of the creative days were a 1,000 years long. You've got some talking about 7,000-year days or 6,000-year days, and... Uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, all this kind of began in the uh, 1800s whenever evolution was gaining ground as a, as a scientifically feasible idea. Hey, maybe evolution is true. Well, evolution takes a long time, doesn't it? Yeah, so that doesn't comport, that doesn't fit with the Bible. We're going to have to add time to the Bible. We're going to have to add the long periods of time to God's Word in order to show that evolution did happen and, okay, the Bible is scientific, yep, we don't have to doubt it, we can trust God's word and God used long periods of time to create the world, is what they were thinking. Well, God's word does not need our help. He says he'll take care of it, he'll preserve it, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll keep it for us. We, he doesn't need our, our help doing that. He does just fine. Truth of the matter is, evolution is an unproved theory tale. We have a $250,000 reward to anybody that can give scientific, empirical, scientific evidence of evolution. You can read about that on our website, drdino.com. Truth is, there is none. There is no evidence. So why would we compromise a perfectly good book? God's Word is perfect. Everybody that has tried to disprove it has come back going, wow, it's right, it's true. Why would we compromise a perfectly good book that's never been proven wrong with a silly theory tale of evolution which has never been proven right? It just doesn't make sense. You know, and it goes deeper than this, David, because if, if, if Adam did not bring death into the world, if he was not really the first, uh, you know, Adam and then the last Adam, Jesus Christ, why did Christ die on the cross? What's the point of that? So... Really, our foundations there in Genesis are incredibly important. Uh, biblically, doctrinally speaking, they are incredibly important to the rest of Scripture. 
So, and there's all kinds of you know scriptural and scientific evidence we can go into that this supports. Look, God's word is true. You can trust it from beginning to end. And one day you'll get judged by that book. So, listeners, be ready for Judgment Day coming soon to a city near you. It's gonna happen. Amen. <laughs> um, you know, there's evolution is, is, has kind of taken a uh, taken a number of blows. And, uh, you know, scientifically, I mean, it blown right out of the water, right? But uh, yeah. it never <laughs> even got started. <laughs> that's it. That's it. But, you know, it's, it's the main thing that's uh, taken over college campuses. Oh, definitely. And what, yet, and David, what do you hear, what do you hear as, the, as the main evidences that they're trying to present today? Well, um, <laughs> you know, I just laugh because, you know, their their evidence is, <laughs> it comes down to, you know, God can't be real, therefore, <laughs> therefore this is true, you know, by default, I don't <laughs> want to believe that's in exactly God. That's exactly what they do, you're exactly right. You know. We don't want to uh, believe in God, therefore what's another explanation to explain how it all got here? And their brilliant right. explanation is, maybe it all came from nowhere. I mean, come on. I, did, I don't know if you, uh, if your listeners have seen uh, Stephen Hawking's is coming out saying, yeah, we used to think that it needed a creator. Now we know it didn't need a creator at all. It can things can come from nothing. I'm going, wow. They cut down trees to print this stuff in magazines. Al Gore right. should be having a heyday with this, man. You want to talk about a waste of resources? My goodness. Amen. Amen. Well, you know. It, it, today, it seems on the campuses that, you know, they're, they're arguing about, um, you know, the, the vestigial organs, which, you know, it's like people still believe that, or the um, the, the rock layers, um, you know, and it's like, you know, staring right in front of them is the, the creation of God that has order and um, you know, in season, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, you know, and yet they have all of these other things. You know, it's interesting, David. Romans chapter 1, when you read verses 18 through 21, you'll find God says, the Bible says, everybody believes in God. No person is going to have an excuse when they stand before God. I mean, if the atheist really really, truly did not know God exists, then when they got to heaven, they could have an excuse. Oh, but God, I really didn't know you were there. I, I genuinely didn't know. I thought you didn't exist. Are they going to have an excuse when they stand before God? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Why? Yeah, right? Because God, yeah, God says, you, you do know that I exist. And in that passage, it says, they are suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. And that's exactly what happens. We find them suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. It was uh, Julian Huxley. Thomas Huxley was known as Darwin's bulldog. And his grandson, Julian Huxley, said, I suppose the reason we left at the origin of species was because the idea of God interfered with our sexual mores. And that's exactly right. what it comes down to. Second Peter tells us that the scoffers, it says, are going to come in the last days. Second Peter chapter 3. These scoffers in the last days are going to come. And the Bible says they are going to walk after their own lusts. The reason people truly scoff at the Bible is not because of science. It's because of sin every single time. It was a Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, that said, if somebody has a problem or enmity between them and the Bible, follow or them and God, follow them home, you will find it rooted in sin, in their lustful sin. So, yeah, we see that all over. That's exactly what's happening. They are suppressing what they know to be true in order to live the life that they want to live. Amen. Amen. Now, as, as I was uh, screening questions uh, for this show from uh, some of my listeners, uh, you know, the, the frequent question that uh, that came up, well, I'm just going to jump off topic just to jump back on the topic, okay, was, okay. you know, you have this 
great big time um, creation ministry, and yet the leader, you know, your father, isn't, uh, you know, isn't really in the ranks anymore uh, because of all of the stuff that's been going on. And uh, I, yeah, I don't want to get into it too much, but I would like to give my my listeners, a, a, you know, a, an update on, you know, on what's happening there. What did happen? I mean, there's so much, uh, you know, there's so much garbage out there that, yeah. I, you know, I think I think you know some some truthiness would be good, you know. <laughs> well, let's get to some some truthiness. First of all, let me be told right up front: my dad is my hero. He is somebody who stands Amen. up for what is right, no matter what the consequences, no matter what the outcome. He is somebody that's going to do what is right. That's what he does. So I admire my dad for his uh, stance on truth, for his stance on righteousness, for his desire to be um, completely 100% transparent and open and real. Anybody that meets my dad for five minutes ago, he is the real deal. This is no phony. He's the real deal. So uh, my dad is my hero. Uh, I've known him all my life. Uh, <laughs> he, he's absolutely been an amazing father growing up. I, I, am, I wish I could be the father that he was to me. I mean, he is abs- to my children. He is absolutely amazing. Uh, growing up, he started the ministry a little more than 20 years ago, really because he saw a need. Somebody needs to teach the truth about creation versus evolution. There wasn't a lot out there. There was some, but not a lot. So he started traveling and speaking on creation versus evolution and, and was very good at it and is still the best today. You can follow his blog on drdino.com where we still we uh, get his emails and we, we send him information and he'll, he'll blog about and write articles about different subjects still going on. So out of the ranks, I don't even know if I'd call it out of the ranks. He's still uh, giving evolutionists a run for their money. He's the one who started the $250,000 offer for evidence of evolution. The truth is there isn't any. But uh, what happened was uh, when our ministry began, my mom and dad are not business people. They just if they needed help, they hired somebody at the end of the day, gave them some money and said, hey, thanks for your help. We appreciate it. Well, the ministry grew from 1989 to 1999, grew tremendously. I mean, we were just blown away. Had no idea about business or anything like that. All we knew is we were reaching people with the gospel, and we loved it. My dad told God, he said, look, I'm not going to copyright my tapes. And uh, typically that means, you know, hey, we may not sell any because everybody's just going to make copies of them. But I said, God, you've got to provide. Uh, we want to know that you are in charge of this, not us. So we, we did that. We didn't copyright our tapes, didn't charge for meetings, and God just blessed. And we saw us needing more and more help over the years. Uh, eventually, we were at the place where we were, you know, had 11, 12, 13, 14, up to by, by 2005, we had 40 people working on our ministry. It was just amazing to, to watch yeah. God work in um, – in 2003, the payroll, we were still doing it all the same. Hey, thanks for your help. Here's some money. The payroll had gone from zero, us, volunteering, to almost $10,000 a week. I mean, it, it's incredible what it takes to, to operate a ministry and to, and to pay the worker that's worthy of his hire. Well, once it got to that point in 2003, uh, we went to the director of the ministry and said, hey, uh, he's actually a pastor, said, hey, we need to switch something up. We're withdrawing a large amount of money. We need to change things up. So we did. We started paying people with checks instead of instead of cash. Um, and some people think, you idiots, didn't you know any better? No. They weren't business people. They didn't know any better. Right. And uh, what they did is not illegal. But what the IRS said is, ah, every time you withdrew money that was less than 10000 you were trying to trick us. You were trying to, to withdraw less than the 10000 because you knew if you withdraw more than ten thousand, uh, that's that's where the bank has to send in a piece of paper to us, letting us know that you withdrew more than ten thousand dollars. Well, we didn't know this, and we didn't care, and it wasn't our job to file the paperwork anyway. That's the bank's job. Well, they came right. and said between two thousand one and two thousand three, they said, hey, any time you withdrew more than nine thousand dollars, but less than ten thousand. You were trying to trick the ministry, or you were trying to, excuse me, trick the IRS and not let us have our piece of paper that says you withdrew money. It was not obtained illegally. 
It was not used or spent illegally. The law, by the way, the, the bank secrecy laws like the $10,000 limit, was actually instituted to catch drug traffickers because they would go around from bank to bank making small deposits at lots of different branches on one day. We dealt with one bank, one teller at one bank for 10 years. Anyway, they came in and said, uh, listen, this is a real problem. Uh, they ended up in 2006, three years later, uh, trying, you know, trying to find something on my dad to shut him up, in my opinion, uh, more of a political prisoner if you hear his stuff, uh, you know, not exactly uh, government friendly to where our government has gone these days compared to where we were founded. Um, but they came in in 2006 and said every time you were doing more than 9,000, less than 10,000, you were structuring your transactions to avoid reporting. And they arrested my mom and dad both on that. Uh, out of all the different times that it happened for, you know, 15 years, they counted 43 times that uh, it was more than 9,000 and less than 10,000. Took those to court, uh, ended up getting a guilty verdict from a jury. Our attorneys in the case said, listen, here's what they had to prove in order to get a guilty verdict. Well, they didn't prove anything, so we don't even need to even put on a defense. So the attorneys did not put on a defense. The jury came back um, a couple hours later and said, we find them guilty on all charges. So that's kind of the, the history, the background of what happened. Uh, currently, my dad is in Jessup, Georgia. I just had a, oh, by the way, the judge instituted or, or gave him a 10-year prison sentence. <clears throat> 10 years wow. because the IRS did not get a piece of paper. Blows right. my mind that rapists and murderers can get less than that. And uh, my dad, I mean, really what he should have done is gone to work for Obama. Then he could be out right now because apparently you can do all that stuff and get away with it as long as you're in the current administration. But um, currently my dad is in Jessup, Georgia. Just got finished visiting him this weekend. He's doing incredibly well um, despite the circumstances. Is very, very ready to get out. Um, we have uh, strived like crazy to change it around in the, in the court system so we can get out, and all has been to none effect right now. I am amazed that we still have a ministry uh, four years after this took place. I thought it would devastate it, and yet God is still working. People out there see the truth. They see Kent for who he is, and they say, wow, I'm supporting that no matter what. And so we're still, we're still spreading the word and teaching the truth, and I love it, and taking it to, to new heights, new levels, and trying to reach more people. That's the goal. Amen. You know, it, it, it's because your your uh, Dr. Hovind spent so much time um, training everybody that that was working with him and for him. Uh, you know, in the early days, that the you know the ministry is able to go on when yeah. the leader gets struck. You see, and so yeah. uh, I think that's that's a really important message that. You know, I think 90% of churches would just fold today if their wow. pastor got got nailed, you see, and yet, uh, you know. Because it's not about a man. It's about a cause. David said, right. is there not a cause when he went to kill Goliath? Is there not a cause? Yes, there's a cause. Kids are getting indoctrinated with the religion of evolution every single day. And many, quote, Christians cannot defend their own faith and teach these kids the truth. We have a mission. We have got to get out there and educate people on the truth about the dinosaurs, the age of the earth, what the world was like before the flood, the lies in the textbooks. You know, we've got to get out there and do that. Matter of fact, David, i got an opportunity for your listeners if they want to take advantage of it. If they go on our website, drdino.com, and then in the URL, type uh, after drdino.com, type slash radio, R-A-D-I-O, drdino.com slash radio, they can right there register and get a free DVD sent to them on those four topics, Age of the Earth, Garden of Eden, Dinosaurs in the Bible, and Lies in the Textbooks. It's two hours long. We'll pay for shipping and everything. We just want to get the word out there, man. We encourage them to Amen. get that even to after they watch it, share it with the friends. Uh, we, have, um, we have sent out... More than 40,000 of those DVDs now. It's absolutely amazing what God is doing and how the truth is spreading. So I'm, I'm encouraged by that. Oh, yes, me too, me too. Now, since, you know, the, the scientific community uh, 
has to keep going back on its its evolutionary uh, view, uh, yeah. the theory. Um, Got to keep fixing it. This new, yeah, it keeps getting revised and revised, you know. But the this new thing that I think is going to be hitting the textbooks here soon is what's called panspermia. Mm, yeah. And are you are you familiar with that? Yeah, just the idea that, you know, life is everywhere in the universe. It's already out there, and it can evolve anywhere as soon as a, a planet or a, a system gets the right uh, ecosystem to support that life. And that's where right. I go, right. hey, you're, you're welcome to believe whatever you want, but that's not science. Science is things that we can see, test, and demonstrate. we got a new uh, section of our ministry called Creation Minute. And we did one on the six types of evolution. If you go to creationminute.com, your listeners can click and watch these different one-minute, high-visually impacting episodes and share them with their friends on creation minutes, uh, on, on different aspects of creation. One is on the six types of evolution. There are actually six types of evolution, only one of which is part of science, things that we can see, test, and demonstrate. So... You're welcome to believe in this idea of panspermia, but for heaven's sake, don't call that science. And even worse, don't make my tax dollars go to pay for that silly theory, actually it's a religion if you believe in it, to be taught in the public schools. Now that's ridiculous. Get it out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, I, I'm sitting here because there's so much that we could, we could be talking about, and I'm saying, boy... I wish you had more time. <laughs> you know. I know, man. Um, we stay plenty busy. I'm going to be going to Ohio this weekend. If any of your listeners are in the Ohio area, check out drdino.com and go into our live events tab uh, and get the information. I'm going to be at a Calvary Chapel in uh, Ohio. I'm, I'm close enough with Ohio. How about that? Uh, then the week after that, I'll be in California at a couple churches in California. Uh, so we're always going around. We've got lots of videos we post online for free. We want to spread the word and spread the truth, so I encourage your listeners, get online, check it out, and then share it. Don't hold it. Share this truth. That's what's going to make a difference in people's lives. Well, amen, Brother Hovind. Uh, I'm going to give you the, uh, the last couple minutes of the show um, to you know, share your website, to share upcoming endeavors, uh, things that we need to be in prayer about, um, and, and, to, and to even say a prayer. Okay, awesome. brother? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, if, uh, if any of your listeners want to contact us, of course, they can do that at our website, drdino.com. If you need to call for any reason, you can talk to the uh, customer service department at a toll-free number in the United States. In, it's uh, 877-479-DINO, D-I-N-O, or 3466. So 877-479-DINO, 3466. They can call us and contact us there. Uh, of course, they can get that free DVD at Dr. Dino, which is D-R-D-I-N-O, Dr. Dino, D-R-D-I-N-O dot com slash radio, Dr. Dino dot com slash radio, and they can get that uh, free DVD sent to them uh, right away. Uh, bottom line is, if I could make one little uh, appeal to your listeners, it would be, what is the purpose or question, what is the purpose to life? You know, science cannot answer that question. Science will never answer the questions of a child. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going when I die? Those questions have to be answered by a higher power. Now, your worldview determines how you answer those questions. And I'm telling you, if you've got the wrong worldview, you're going to have a very sad life. See, the naturalistic or evolutionary worldview teaches that death is natural. Death is actually what helps us evolve to the next level. Death is a good thing. See, according to creation, according to the creation worldview, it matches exactly what our heart is telling us. Death is bad. Suffering is wrong. It's not good. Something is wrong with the world. The Bible even tells us the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain. We're waiting for a Redeemer. And that is the whole story of the Bible, starting with creation. God made a good world. Sin entered into that world. God had to put death in the world because of sin. Death is the result of sin, not God. But the good news is that 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came, 
and he died on a cross, and he offers forgiveness of sin to anybody that will repent and put their trust in him. If you've never done that, you need to do that. You need to repent, and you need to put your trust in Jesus Christ. That's what will make the difference in your life 100 years from now. And then you wait because God says he is going to come and redeem the world. A new world is coming that you and I get to be a part of. And it talks about how he's going to make it back to the way that it was in the Garden of Eden, where the wolf shall lie down with the lamb, the leopard and the young, uh, uh, the, the leopard and the young, the, the fatling and a child shall lead them. God is going to make this world back to the way that it was, and I sure hope you get to take part in that. If you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, you need to find out. You need to get that taken care of. So uh, I'd encourage you to do that. We got a few more minutes, or one more minute. I can pray, David. Or are we out of time? No, we've got four minutes. Four minutes, okay. Well, um, my encouragement also then would be for you to share the truth. David, you set up a blog and uh, started doing a, a blog radio program. How hard was that to do? Yeah. Uh, there you just saw yeah. an opportunity, saw a need, and you filled it. By the way, if your listeners don't know God's will for their heart, that's how, or for their life, that's how you find out. Find a need, what's a need that you see, and fill it. The biggest need I see is that so many people are being indoctrinated with this evolutionary worldview, and it's leading them to unbelievable conclusions when it comes to what life is all about. You see, if evolution is true, there is no purpose to life. If evolution is true, we came from this cosmic belt. We are an accident if evolution is true. If evolution is true, you don't go anywhere when you die. If evolution is true, nothing you do or say will ever matter. If creation is true, on the other hand, then there's a creator. If creation is true, there's a purpose to life. Your purpose is to glorify God. The Bible says all things were made by him and for him. We are made for God's glory. And if you're not glorifying your life, or glorifying God with your life, you need to figure out what life is all about and start glorifying God with your life. I don't know what your uh, ministry is going to look like, if it's going to be getting DVDs and passing them out, if it's going to be making copies of our DVDs that are not copyrighted for that purpose uh, and pass them out, if it's going to be sharing gospel tracts, if it's going to be one-on-one -on -one conversations, if it's going to be relationships that you get with people so that you can impact their worldview, if it's going to be starting a blog talk radio station, I don't know what God has for your life, but I'll tell you this. He's got something, and you better get busy doing it, because 100 years from now, you're going to wish you had. We got time to pray? Amen. Yes, uh, you do. Heavenly Father, thanks for this opportunity where David and I can just sit and talk and, and, and relish your word, your truth, where, where ultimate truth comes from. God, we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, we know that you are the creator of the universe. It is an honor to pause for just a second and reflect on who you are. Heavenly Father, would our lives glorify you? Would we use our lives to teach the truth of your word? And would we start at the very beginning? God, your word can be defended starting in Genesis. I pray that we would do that because that's exactly what's needed today. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you'll continue to use us to spread your truth in your precious name. Amen. Wow. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother Eric, for, uh, for being on the show with us today. I uh, hope, to, uh, hope to be able to talk to you again soon. That would be great, David. Thanks a lot for making this opportunity available. We certainly appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it, too. The Lord bless you. You, too. God bless. That was Brother Eric Hoven of Creation Science Evangelism. You can visit his website at www.drdino.com. Uh, for more information uh, and to listen to the archives of this show, you can visit my website at www.biblehealth101.com. Thanks so much for listening today, and God bless you.